to another episode of the Nick and Nick Show. Pop it up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got a special treat today. We got three Nicks on the mic. Yes. We're going to talk fitness as usual. We're going to rant and rave. Um, One of the Nicks is the Nick you guys know, Nick Troop. He's on here every week. Now, our special guest is a good, good, good friend of mine. Solid dude, Mr. Nick Hopper. Clap it up. Oh, man. You uh, give me much honor. and I'm happy to... It's actually a great opportunity for me to get to talk to you guys like you. So, you know, I'm just a... You know, I'm a... A regular guy getting to talk to some industry guys, and I love to be associated with with Nick and everything he's doing. So, hey, but don't we- yeah, definitely want to hear about definitely want to hear about you know how you guys got connected. You know, a little bit of backstory with you two at some point. Uh, yeah, on the show tonight. Oh, we we can we can talk about that now. Actually, since you know we're kind of yeah, doing let's, let's do that. Let's, let's introduce Nick a little bit. Yeah, we saw. I mean, because I, I saw Nick in, the, in shape, in uh, Bakersfield in shape on uh, coffee, I think. Mm, yep, that's right. Was that like, that was like uh, 2010, I guess? Like, maybe January, February, I don't know. Shit, was it that long ago? It had to be. It had to be. Yeah, because I was, yeah, I was deploying overseas for a living, so I would come back. You know, I would come back home for two or three months and have a whole, like, you know, cycle planned out and, you know, just some goals. And I would see Nick in shape. And it was like, you know, most of the time with <laughs> with people that uh, people that I end up really getting along with at first, you know, he, Nick was really similar to me. So I was like, you know, who is this guy? Like, who does he think he is? You know? And, uh, so we were, you know, we just kind of like, we said what's up for a while and, uh, I don't even know how we started talking. Yeah. It's, uh, um, you, you, you know how it is. Uh, you go to the gym and the norm of the gym now is just, yeah. You know, the gym atmosphere is like, you know, especially yeah. with, uh, between men, it's like, you know, you give each other this space and it's not like, you know, I wasn't trying to, uh, you know, I, I definitely, you know, you, from just visually, you develop respect for people based on what you see him doing. Okay. So I saw that, I saw Nick in there, I saw what he was doing, you know, there's always that, that, uh, competitive, you know, edge that, that's always there between competitors and athletes. And so, you know, you develop, I guess, a mutual respect yeah, you see, you, through you, observation. You basically, you know, you, you know, you zone out when you go into gym, especially if you don't go to socialize, uh, like myself. And you see, once you actually see somebody that kind of looks like they belong in the gym, you're like, you know, it's caveman shit. You look at each other, you're like, unk, unk. you know, you're, just, you're basically yeah. like, you give the head nod, the head yeah. nod, you know, head the head nod. And then, then you're I like, mean, yeah, there's they, definitely they, that protocol. Then it's like two dogs, you know, they kind of smell each other like, okay, this guy's not a tool. He's like, oh, he's not a tool. Hey, what's up? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. You, I, I, I think, uh. I think Nick, if I recall, you. Uh, I'm trying to remember. He was warming up with your Mac. No, he, he Nick, you uh, you, you, rec- you recognized me from something, from somewhere or somebody. Uh, I don't, I don't know that I did. I mean, because yeah. I remember you used to. We probably saw each other because I worked out at most of the gyms in Vegas, so we probably saw each other at Body Exchange, and I think it was like recognized faces yeah it might have been something like that and we, we lost we lost nick troop so he'll have to call back in <laughs> this guy man <laughs> word up <laughs> he's calling us on the damn rotary phone okay here he is hold on let's see here hold on okay you there yep 
Okay. okay. It's gonna be like this the whole time. Oh, oh yeah, it's, it's 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 back to these th- it's back to these things, I guess. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's all it's, good. I, I live in a I, I mean, live in a dead zone, man. I live in a dead zone. A, 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 anybody listening, if you don't like the fact that we have to hang up and call each other back and stuff, then fucking get off our podcast then. But man, this is real life. This is real life right here, and I love this. You know, the technical difficulties. This is what uh, what I think makes it all special. So I mean, you know, I think it's a part of the the, the mystique of it. Oh yeah. So, but basically, basically, two fucking dudes working out in the gym, and you know, there's the 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 the, the head nod and okay, these guys, you know, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. Okay, this guy knows what he's doing. We should uh form an alliance. <laughs> Put the decoder rings together. <laughs> cuz you, you know. cuz you know how it is uh, in the gym nowadays. It's not like the old days where people used to act like, you know, like-minded people would 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 hang out. Everybody yeah, yeah. everybody's on that or fuck this guy or or Everybody gives off that vibe. You kind of have to give off that vibe sometimes, so people don't steal your shit or take your weights and your bench. I mean, you kind of, yeah. yeah, you kind of got to put on that that a uh, little bit of asshole. But I mean, I think it it also, you know, it comes down to you can't uh, me meeting you. You're an example of you can't really pigeonhole people because you know you see someone and you'll put them in their little like box that you have for them. But I mean, Nick, I mean, I never never realized before I met Nick that he would be so knowledgeable or that he was so diverse or, you know, so it just goes to show you, you can never, you always gotta, you know, never judge someone at face value. Oh yeah. That's the truth. That's cool. that, that is the truth because, uh, you know, somebody, you know, I, I, I've, I've met some people and I'm like, Oh, this fucking guy. Let me start talking about monster trucks or whatever. And so, <laughs> so we have a conversation. Right. <laughs> and this guy's like, hey, have you ever heard of a blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, what? No, keep talking. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's definitely the truth. And and, 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 I, and when you go, when I go in the gym, I, I try, I try to make myself approachable. But um, it just always backfires on me. I just don't. I just. I just don't know. Let me. Let me. Let me tell you guys about a quick story, real quick. Um, so I go to a gym called In Shape, and uh, I always go to the one on Coffee where I met Nick. It's on a street called Coffee Road. That's why we call it Coffee. But um, I'm in there working out, and I'm only going maybe twice a week. The other time I'm working out at my spot, and um, I, I I I made I missed maybe like two weeks. And I say, okay, let me go back to the gym and uh, deal with these guys. So I go in there, and I haven't been in there in a while, so I'm kind of trying to stay out of everybody's way or, you know, just, just kind of be a fly on the wall and just kind of just get in there and get out. And this girl comes up to me, and uh, she, she's like, hey, and interrupts me. I'm like, uh, yeah. She goes, oh, you're the guy. And I'm like, huh? She's like, you know Antoine? I said, okay, yeah, I know Antoine. That's my friend. She's like, yeah, he's over there. And I saw Antoine. He waved. And uh, she was like, oh, uh, Antoine, come here. So Antoine comes over. She goes, so this is the guy. And I'm looking like, okay, what's going on? So I asked him, like, huh? Do I know you from somewhere? And she said that she was in the gym a week before, and she was getting a smoothie at the juice bar, and there was a pack of trainers talking shit about me. (laughs) Really? No way. Talking shit about me, man. Like, I haven't been to the gym in a couple weeks. I don't mess with anybody. I keep my headphones on. I say, excuse me. I make sure uh, a bench is clear before I use it. I don't give anybody any advice to threaten the trainers, even if they ask me for advice. Nothing. But, I mean, I think, you know, I mean, all three of us, that's a lot of that's intimidation, you know. And I think you're just, you're very comfortable in your skin. And I mean, even like I said, when I met you, man, even me, every guy puts off a different level of intensity and you just put that out there because I'm another, I got, I I mean, call whatever you want, alpha male, call it, you know, whatever you want to label it as, but each guy puts out his own. And I think you put that out and you know, a lot of people can be intimidated by that. Shit, man, I guess so. 
Well, no, that's the truth. Like, you know, I I have people tell me all the time that, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a scary dude and so I open my mouth. And then they realize that I'm I'm not. I, again, it's just, you just put out, like you're saying, you put out that alpha sort of vibe and people just don't want to approach you. Except for that one guy at the gym. There's always that one. And uh, you posted a video about that guy uh, the other day on Facebook, Nick, about how there's a guy who wants to take you on your fitness journey. He wants to help you on that fitness journey. I don't know if you put, I don't know who the heck the guy is that you're posting this video of, but he's talking about, you know, there's always that one old guy at the gym that wants to put the young guy on the fitness. Oh, journey. yeah, Jeff Wright. Yeah, and I got, yeah, and I got, I got nailed with that the other day. You know, I work out at um, the local rec center here. You know, I'm too cheap to go pay for a gym membership anyway. I just, you know, yeah two bucks and go work out the rec center or at the high school I work at for free and we uh there's this one old dude in there he's 80 years old and you know he, he's always like wanting to like talk to him. he's always in there when I go in at 4 30 in the morning he's always in there just like at what time you said 4 30 well I uh I get up at 4 30 it opens up at 5 and he's he's in he's in that morning crew. I either go at five o'clock in the morning with the morning crew or at four thirty in the afternoon. But he's always in there at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, four thirty in the yeah. morning, man. That's that Ronnie Coleman shit. Hell no. <laughs> 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 I gotta be getting paid to lift weights at four thirty in the morning. Yeah, it takes about four or five hours. <laughs> but you can't go uh, go on. But, but no, yeah, he's he's in there and he's just like no I'm He's the only guy that ever approaches me ever, and it's just everybody else just leaves me alone. It's you know a bunch of forty, fifty year old dudes, you know, doing the same arm workout every day, or, or, you know, whatever. That's all they do is they work arms. Except for this one old guy who comes in with like a mock long sleeve mock turtleneck. He's got the sweatband on for a headband, you know, windbreaker pants, a little fanny pack, and just like I've been I've been doing this for. Yes, I give the guy much respect. You know, it's like good for you, dude. I, you know, that's, that's impressive. He's been working out, you know, his entire life. He looks good. You know, he's not a Jack Lane or anything like that. But yeah, I wouldn't have guessed the guy to be, you know, eighty. I think he's eighty three. And but he, uh, he's in there and he's just like, well, here, you know, this is the way I. I mean, this is like appreciate it. Thanks. You know, and I listen to him and I be respectful. You know, and I, I let him walk away, put my headphones back in, and I go back at it. But it's just like. You know, he's he's that fitness journey guy that wants to to help me out. Apparently, I, I don't know if I don't know what I'm Dude, doing or what. And I have more. I probably deal with more issues with the older guys than anybody else too. <laughs> and I and I don't know, like, and you have to like because that naturally I have a friendly face, so it's like people want to come. So I kind of have to put on that because I mean they just yeah they want to. I call them VH1 storytellers, man. <laughs> Cause, and, and you know they just they want to be around that those young guys and it, you know and it makes them feel young again and I get, I think that's the biggest thing for them and and uh, you know it's something that they they don't have anymore so like like Nick was saying you try to respect it and be like I feel bad because there's a couple times then you know North County San Diego Escondido 24 Hour Fitness and it's it's busy. And there was, there would be like, uh, this guy, he was like a war vet and he would come up and try to tell me jokes every day. You know, just like Nick was saying, and I feel so bad. I popped off some dude probably was like a war hero. I went off on him one day and I, you know, no. and you try to be patient, but you just have your days where, you know, you're trying to get, you know, do what you got to do to get your body ready for whatever it is, you know? Oh, no. So I, I, uh, I feel your pain. Yeah. You're like back to back. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm in there. I, I'm yeah. short time, you know. I got to hurry up and get my workout cranked out and, and get out of there. I'm not. I don't like that it used to be where I'd, you know, be. I'd be all about camping out in the gym for, you know, an hour and a half, two hours, whatever it is. It's like, from start to finish, I'm in and out an hour. You know, and that's, that's lifting cardio. That's, that's the whole mind. You know, I'm, I try to cut as much volume as I can into an hour. Yeah, you have your priorities definitely now. Oh, man, yeah. that's why I, that, I just why I'm so lucky to have my own little setup, man. Because, you know, it it's it's sad because I love having like real conversations with people. I can sit all day. I I can have a, I, I'll miss I'll miss a, an important 
a meeting or a doctor's appointment to have a great, com rare conversation with somebody. But I hate people. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a double-edged sword, man. I go in the gym, I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck, what now? You just, and you can just see a guy walking up, he's just like, oh, fuck, what now, what now, what now, what now? And, you know, a lot of times, the people I get that approach me, they always want to ask me stupid shit because they can't figure me out. Like Nick was saying, you know, you know, judge a book by his cover. Like, they'll look at me and they're like, okay, this guy's a black guy. Okay, he doesn't look hard, but he's big. Uh... Does, does he use? Does he use? Yeah, does, does he? Does he use? Does he use steroids? Oh no! But he's always in here with a tank top. He's always in here with a tank top, but he doesn't have any back knee. Okay, so they can't figure me out. So they come up and instead of just saying, "Hey, I'm blah blah blah," and start talking fitness, they ask they ask me some dumbass question, and um, it kind of pisses me off. Well, you know that too. You're you're not uh, you're not ignorant. You're well spoken. You have a vocabulary, so that that throws you know that throws people off too. You know when you know when uh, it's something what they expect, it's not what. So yeah, it throws them off. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, d definitely. But I I love that though. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to keep people off balance. Yeah, I I I I, I love doing that to people, but uh, it's just it's just funny where it's how pe people. Especially with technology now, socially, people have their, their social skills have diminished to the point to where it's it's almost appropriate to say, "Hey, man, I want to ask you a question. Can I text you?" <laughs> Bro, don't even see like this is like you're bored. I'm bordering on the rant on this one because that's I probably the biggest like you know Nick was talking about. There's a certain group of people who understand like common courtesy. And the basic, you know, you don't have to be a bodybuilder to go into a gym and know how to have, you know, uh, etiquette or proper, you know, how you should handle yourself. You know, it's just being polite exactly. and treating people like you would treat, you know, you would want to be treated. And that's the biggest thing I think I see is, and people's, uh, their, their awareness, their situational awareness is like, you know, like Nick says, everybody's got their devices on. And for me, you know, I used to be one of those guys, but, you know, now I, I don't wear anything or wear my headphones. And it's not to say I would never do it again, but, uh, you know, I think you miss a lot when you're, uh, you're constantly dialed in, you know, and, and people are so isolated within the little social, you know, network. So, yeah, yeah, but, and that's, but that's a the, part of the rudeness, you know. But at the same time, though, it's, it's, I, I agree 100% with what you're saying, but, at the same time, without it, the atmosphere is from the gym is just a horrible experience. You, you know, it's, it's we don't have a, a Metro Flex Long Beach here or something a little more hardcore. So it's like those the, those days I have where I want to, you know, uh, get out of the matrix or actually enter the matrix and just try to soak in the environment. You know, all I hear is people talking shit about another guy across the room. You know, right, then, yeah. then, then then I gotta hear uh, fucking techno Rihanna remixes, and uh, then I get and see. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Because then it's like, then there's those days where you can't, you can't, uh, you know, your environment is what it is, and you can't change. Yeah. So I mean, and that's another thing. That's why I say I, I love. You can't be dogmatic. You know, it's like, like I said, I could. There could be a time when I could, I could start using headphones again, and it would probably help me and i enjoy it you know it's like nick said it's it's nice to zone out when you're exercising <laughs> nick nick troop what what about you what do you what do you do what, what's your what's, what's your whole what's your whole uh ensemble when you go to the gym or do you do you have the uh the iphone with the uh uh, with the arm the, the strap, <laughs> with that, with the arm strap, <laughs> the Dre beat, <laughs> the beats by Dre. What, what's, what's your style, man? And I guess he's not there. So, <laughs> hello. He disappeared on us again. Yeah, he disappeared. He said, oh, "This is my chance to eat some chili." But uh, yeah. Anyway, back to that. Uh yeah, you know how it is in Bakersfield, man. Uh, these the 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 people here they're they're a little uh, off kilter anyway compared to other places. And you should know this because, like you said, you just came from what you said Escondido. Yeah, 
North, North County, San Diego. I mean, it's you, you're right on. I mean, there's every, you know, depending on the size of the city, it, you do get different vibes. And, you know, in San Diego, there's so many, so many people, you know, people don't have time to talk shit about you or to, to get caught up because, you know, they have their own thing going on. So I, Get a, getting out of Bakersfield, or you know, you go to a bigger city. I think that's the case everywhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you know, small. And we're still, you know, Bakersfield is. A, I wouldn't say it's a small place, but you know, like uh, like you, you can attest to this. It's a small world, and you know, it seems it does at times. Seems everybody knows someone else. You know. Oh yeah, Nick, you back? Yeah, man. Hey, did you just turn my volume down, or what? I heard everything you guys were saying. Uh, no, we're, nothing, we're, we're just talking. That's crazy. No, yeah, no, I, you guys thought you had lost me there, man. I was still online. I don't know what the going on. Again, it's, it's my, my shit-ass phone. Yeah, man, um, we're, we're trying to be your friend and include you in conversations. You just leave us hanging. I know. Oh, I was, I was talking. I was talking. And <laughs> y'all, y'all weren't responding. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right. Anyway, hold on, guys. Let's take a quick commercial break for our sponsors. I'm Michael Delapava from Miami, Florida, owner of the Battle Axe Gym. I'm a nationally qualified strongman, and I powerlift as well. In strongman, I happen to like the movements that I'm not good at. Um, I'm not the best presser. I'll be honest. I'm just, you know, I don't like pressing as much. It's difficult for me. So I do like the log press and the circus dumbbell, which are, I think, the log press is the definition of strength. You get something really heavy and you pick it up off the ground and you press it over your head. There is, to me, there is no other definition. Performance sports are about performance. I'm extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Top Secret. It was something that not only am I proud of, but it's one of those things where I call my mother. I'm like, Mom, I made it in Spanish. Ya lo hice. I use the Top Secret way. I use the Top Secret BCAAs. I use the creatine. I use the pump igniter because when you're lifting at 9 o'clock at night, a pre-workout can really make your workout. That's what I give my clients, that's what I give my family and my friends, and it's good stuff. There's just no, there's no buffer around it, that's just reality. Nitroflex, hyperemia and testosterone enhancing powder by GAT. To build strong, dense, grainy muscle, break it down first with insane training. Big Rami takes Nitroflex right before each training session to decimate the weights in the gym. Available in eight intense flavors, Nitroflex by GAT is one of the most powerful pre-workout concentrates on the market. Clinically studied Nitroflex gives you that phenomenal pump, seething intensity, and laser-sharp focus. Nitroflex by GAT. Get it now. All right, we're back from our break. We're going to get back to it. And uh, like we were saying before we went on break, before we lost Nick, what is your gym ensemble? Are you like the iPad guy? You know, no, not at all. <laughs> I've actually seen Bro, somebody. I'm I've, not gonna lie hey, to you. I've if seen I see you with an iPad, iPad, I'm gonna laugh at you. Hey, I've like, seen a guy in the gym with an iPad. And you know what? A Maybe few. he's like, if he was getting it done, if you're getting it done, I don't got nothing to say. You know, obviously, yeah. but uh, you know, you, you know, it does. It just looks. I'm just laughing to myself, like, like what you got a little like iPad backpack that you strap on, or like how does that work? <laughs> yeah, no, this guy, th this guy was doing chest on the bench with dumbbells, and he just he w he just would put it underneath the bench, and he would he would lift, <laughs> right. and then the oh. idiot was dropping the weights in between sets, and then he would pick up his iPad, and he was you know surfing through it. I'm just like, man, I didn't see it all. I've seen it all. No, yeah, I've I, seen that I, a couple I times. Yet, I haven't seen that yet, but yeah, I Ooh, wouldn't surprise me if I see you know, some kids with them and if that's not too much longer. Can you say that again, Nick? We can barely understand you here, pal. No, I just said uh, it wouldn't surprise me if I see that here pretty soon with the way shit's going here. Um, you know, the rec center and some of the, some of the things that the kids are coming in there with when they're going to the the training sessions in uh, at the rec center. Uh, <laughs> an iPad, real quick, like. But no, but to answer you guys, I I am a very minimalistic guy. I've got the same little drawstring bag that I keep my belt in, my wrist straps, my cheap ass headphones that I only use when 
I only get new headphones whenever we get free ones. And that's it. You know, I put me on and leave me alone. Now, right. now, now, see, I, I gotta bring up, I gotta bring Nick Hopper up real quick. I gotta clown him real quick because <laughs> <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Nick Hopper was a muscle tech guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Nick Hopper had the, the 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 bag, the jug, the gas shirt on. I was like, okay, this dude is serious. That's why I stayed out of his way. No, I had the uh, yeah, because I just had all my gas, all my gas gear, and you know, you don't like I, you know, I ordered it off the website like everybody else, but you know, you don't see it a lot. So uh, he said, "Muscle tech guy." <laughs> <laughs> he looked like a, he looked like he looked like the gym version of a Call of Duty operator. I was like, yeah, let me stay away from this guy. This guy, he's he's oh, he, he's in here that to get was, it. That was all, yeah, but that was all bark and no bite. Like I was just like, <laughs> yeah, you know me, yeah, I was just yeah, like, trying yeah, to get my work done. Oh, yeah, but yeah, I did. That was funny. Yeah, yeah, because the, the first time we started talking, but I. The first time we started talking, I was like, okay, he's got to know about bodybuilding. You can't come in here looking like this and not know anything about bodybuilding. And what do you know? He knows about bodybuilding. So I'm like, thank God. Now I can actually have a real conversation in here about something. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah. But, yeah. I, you, you, like I said, I never got the don't fuck with you vibe. But I did get the uh, the muscle tech guy vibe. I was like, okay, this guy, if he's not, if, if he's not competing, he's looking to do so. And right. he's at a stage where he's 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 here to handle business. So let me stay the fuck out of his way. <laughs> well, yeah, you I mean, you did Nick? Uh, no, not at all, man. I mean, I Nick hates the clo- I You know, it's okay. not that I uh, see. That's that's. I guess we're getting into it now about the whole industry thing because I was thinking about it. <laughs> and you know, I've never I've never competed. Uh, never done anything, you know, like in, you know, professional or anything. And, uh, it's not that I haven't thought about it or wanted to at different points, but like, you know, for all of us, uh, bodybuilding the journey and we each have our path. But I think for me, uh, it's good that I keep it like this because it, you know, I, it makes me a complete person and it's my personal journey. And, you know, I don't, I don't take away, it doesn't take away from, I admire the people that go up there and the pre-contest dieting, all the work, all the, the cumulative effort it takes to get up on stage, I admire greatly. Um, okay. Me personally, for how I believe, it's just like, I, I just think that a lot of times, you know, people lose sight of why they're doing something. So that's just kind of how I feel, yeah. I guess, in regards to the industry. Exactly. You know? Okay. Exactly. Okay. Like, like me, like me. That's see, my my whole thing was this, and it it, it 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 crossed my mind a couple times, but I was always, I'm I'm a person that I believe that if you're gonna do something, you gotta do it to the max, and I never, I never cared for that aspect of bodybuilding. I I, I never I never okay. I never thought like man, if I do this, I want to win, and I don't think you should get up there unless you want to win. You know, even yeah. even if you do, I don't I don't I don't believe in that attitude like oh I just want to get up there and do my best. You're gonna get up there and do your best because you know you're gonna get smashed. Then that's all you can do, which is fine. But yeah. you shouldn't do it just for that reason. You should do it because you want to win. You want to be the best at it. That's competition. So yeah, anything that 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 I'm going to do that requires me to be in some type of league or organization or team. And compete against other individuals, I have to have that mentality of I want to win. And I just don't have that. I'm more of the guy like, okay, as long as I feel like I did the best I could, I could be the the best, the best bodybuilder in the world, but I, I, and and win. But I would, I would only be doing it just to do my best. And I I can do that without a trophy or an NPC card. No, I hear you. Right. So that was always my thing. So, so I was more into like, okay, you know, how can I influence people that, or help people that want to try to take that journey, or how can I, uh, you know, be in in the business and in in, in other, or other being other, involved in other aspects of the business besides the competitive side of it, and that's kind of t- what took me down my path with Muslim militia. I hear you. You know, I I got into the whole competing, but just for that standpoint of you know being a former. Athlete and 
Yeah, got into some competitive bench press stuff, and it's like I always followed bodybuilding, and I was like, yeah, hey, let's let's go ahead and see what happens and hop on stage. And you know, I I never actually did bodybuilding. I did men's physique, um, and that's still bodybuilding. You know, people, it is, well, it, it is, but it, you know, people give it a hard time because you know they don't train legs. Well, yeah, I, I still train legs, and yeah, well, I mean, I think that's a common misconception, though. I mean, men's physique. Guys like, you know, you take guys like Steve Cook. He's a physique guy, and he has a monster set of legs. And I think that's just, Mark, Mark, I consider Mark figure Anthony. guys, just, yeah, Mark Anthony's another one. I consider, like, yeah. figure guys just as much bodybuilders as, you know, as the all the open division guys. But yeah. I think it's just a, all your on personal a professional work level, On a professional level, what, what, to me, what ruins what ruins it and gives it that, that stigma of being... Uh, making you less than the bodybuilder is all is the NPC. It's all these Weenie Hut Juniors that come out there, and you know, they're they're, right. they're like, oh, I can get in the bodybuilding. It's not going to take me years because all I really have to do is have an enhanced beach body, and I don't have to train. And those are the guys to that ruin it. But a lot of the guys that built the physique division were bodybuilders, you right. know, yep. and, and they weren't Camaro, willing to. Steve Cook, yep. um, Static. Austin, um, yeah, all those guys. Yeah, they are. They all, were all beast, man. They're the awesome. original, the original guys who repped it at the Olympia for the first ever men's physique. You know, all those dudes. You know, those are the guys that are are actually, you know, what are, are going to be turning into the, the classic physique division more than likely if they really want to. You know, the guys that have to show off the legs because they actually train legs, and you know, now like you said, it's all those guys with just the uh, Big shoulders, big chest, don't work legs. They got these tiny little, you know, and, and, but, but, bigger than their legs. But but you, but you know what? It's it's just so um, it's just so douchebaggy now to be a competitive bodybuilder, and I think that ruins it for a lot of guys who aren't deep enough in it to where it's beneficial to compete. Whether it's from yeah. a monetary standpoint or even just a popularity standpoint, it's kind of discouraging because you know uh, you get these people who just get an NPC card and you know, they're already fairly lean and they're just up on stage talking about, yeah, bro, I'm about to fucking get up here and fucking kill it, man. And da, 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 and talking all this shit. Yes. And you're like, okay. And what else? <laughs> yeah, right. And you can't even talk bodybuilding with them and they compete. And you know, here's the yeah. thing. I'm a guy who, whatever I'm into boxing or whatever it is, I like to get into the history of things and, and go back and learn about the Steve Reeves and all these people, even though I wasn't there or, or anything like that. I just think it find it's, it's interesting, and I think we should all learn our history to a degree. But I don't hold people to that. But it's a damn shame when I can't talk to you about bodybuilding from five years ago, bodybuilding from two years ago. And it just... It's, yeah. Here, let me guys tell you guys something real quick. So, I'm not going to say who it is, but it's, it's, it's a girl I know. And uh, I used to train her, and she hits me up, and she wants to know what she's like. I need your help. I need to know what weight I should be to compete. And I'm like, it was a, it was a what? <laughs> and she's like, I need to know what weight to, I need to be at to compete. And I said, well, first of all, it's not a weight thing. It's a look thing. I said, this is an MMA. Well, yeah, I said, this is an MMA. I said, you know, <laughs> I said, um, obviously, if you're, if you're tall, you'll be in a tall class or blah, blah, blah. I said, but you're already off to a bad start in this conversation. So I'm trying to figure out why she's even asking me this. Because last time I saw her, she was nowhere near stepping on a stage. And um, what, what division is she trying to get into? See, that's, this that's what we're, this what we're getting at. She doesn't know. She doesn't know oh, how okay. it even. She doesn't even know how it works. So I'm picking yeah. her brain. And I'm telling her. I'm saying like, well, you, you know, you're not even. You're not even. Even ready or even close to even thinking about a show. Why don't you try get, getting a little better shape and then try hitting the stage? And she's asking me other questions, and I'm just basically like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why do you all of a sudden do you want to try to compete? And she's like, oh, because my friend, she's thinking about doing another show. Uh, and she wants me to do it with her, but she doesn't know what weight I should be at. 
Exactly. That's <laughs> it's, I'm like, okay. So she's done a show before and she's asking, she's telling you that she needs to know what weight you should be competing at. Obviously, she, it, it's my whole point is these people just jump on stage because they think it's cool and they think it's cute. You know, they're like, oh, oh hell no. they're, they're just like, oh, I want to be hot like Paige Hathaway. I'm going to compete. And then they get this self entitlement of, you know, it's, it's, it's like this. It's like, um, you go up to a girl in the gym, you're talking to a girl in the gym and, um, you bring up another girl in the gym. You're like, do you know, do you know, um, do you know Stacy? And the girl's like, yeah, I, I've seen her around. And you go, um, oh yeah, she comes in here all the time. She kills it. She's a beast. And uh, so uh, you uh, you guys train very similar. Yeah, yeah, we do. But I'm different though. I compete and stuff. Like I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm in the NPC. <laughs> You're like what? Good for you. You paid a hundred dollars for a little piece of paper. <laughs> exactly. But that's the yeah, attitude. Dude, that's that why. is the attitude of bodybuilding nowadays. And to me, that's the most unappealing part of it. But yeah, right. it's yeah, a right. money pit. We, you know, we talk about we talk about priorities changing and how we train a little bit ago and. You know, that's just it. Like I've been getting asked if I'm gonna hop on stage again. You know, last time I hopped on stage was 2013, and you now I have people asking, "Oh, you're gonna get on stage again? You're gonna compete? You're looking pretty good right now." And I'm like, "I don't feel the need to drop 300 bucks to try to go win a five dollar trophy." Yeah, you know, is. like it's like I, I I just wanna you know look good to look good right now and look good to feel good. And I don't need to go try to win a, a five dollar trophy by dropping 300 bucks. You know. If you want to give me 300 bucks, hell yeah, I'll go help on stage. But, you know, and then you a $5 trophy. But, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> but you can't, you can't blame capitalism. They're, they're playing off people's wishes, wants, and, 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 and things like that. They're looking at, they're, they're selling people these dreams and they're making people feel like they're bigger than what they are. They're like, hey, there's money in that. You know, social media. You know, is selling yes, people yes. Stacy, Stacy, Stacy looks booty sauce. But <laughs> you know, we're 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 gonna give her a spray tan and tell her she's pretty. <laughs> All right, and I'm sure like and everyone's just in, trying to become into famous. Industry wise, too. I mean, it's it's tough. I think it's tough for all the people out there that are that do have cards. And are working hard, you know, because it's not like we're just sitting here, you know, it's, it's the body, we all know that the bodybuilding industry is what it is. And it's a very, uh, you know, it can be very deceptive. And there's, there's the commercial side, you know, and, and then there's like the actual side where it's like there's actual work involved, you know, and, and there's the sacrifices. And, and I think it's hard too for all the people that are pro that do, you know, they have a car, they're doing, they they are our true competitors, and you know they want to get up on that stage because they want to do it, and that's in their heart to do it. Like it's their heart song. Yeah. So and like Nick was saying though, I think because the sport, the good and bad of it is it gaining the notoriety is, you know, it attracts that that uh, you know the, the the instant gratification person. Like I want my limelight. You know, I like you know like you said, girls handing out meal plans after like doing a contest, like. You know, like okay, yeah. I made it. You know, <laughs> <Like so. laughs> and it, it's our society. You, you know? need to eat six ounces of tilapia, three spears of asparagus, and that's all you're gonna eat for the next twelve weeks. Yeah, and it's like yeah, you see a picture before and after, and it's like, well, you basically got scoliosis. Oh, okay, right. okay, okay guys. <laughs> let, 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 this 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 is what kills me on Instagram and social media, especially Instagram. And I swear, you guys can anybody listening, you guys can you guys can call me on this. You can go look for yourselves. You know, ninety. I'm I'm gonna put I'm I'm gonna state this as fact. I'm gonna say ninety five percent of women who have the words "fit mom." In their um, in their their bio name or whatever their ID name on their social media, I right. guarantee you they're pale, <laughs> flat chested, <laughs> kashi cereal eating females, <laughs> yoga yoga and oat bran. <laughs> I look it up. I swear every time. 
Hey man, you're you're sitting there. I'm just I'm over. I'm the choir over here. You're preaching the <laughs> choir, man. Like you don't. <laughs> I mean, I ain't trying to shout you down. <laughs> it's it's it's. I don't know. It's it's. It's his own thing. It's his own group of people. It's his own. It's his own group. It's just okay. It's like you take, you you, you take a group of black people, and, and, and you <laughs> you take a group of black people and you tell everybody everybody in this group has the name Little. You close your eyes. You're gonna think okay. Everybody here probably is some type of rapper, <laughs> right? <laughs> like yeah. that's that, and and that's a no brainer, pretty much. Anybody, you, oh, your name starts with little something. Okay, hey, do you rap, sir? Yes. Do you rap, sir? Yes. Do you rap, sir? Yes. Okay, I swear, every single person, you close your eyes, say we have a room full of full of Instagram ladies. Here's Fit Mom eighty nine. Here's Fit Mom twenty seventeen. Here's Fit Mom six thirty. You open your eyes, and they're all gonna look the same. They're from different parts of the world, different walks of life. They all are gonna look right. the same. It is crazy. It's their own thing. Blows me. Away. And I think, yeah. and I think we can't be just biased to the. You know, the men were just as bad. We have our, we have those guys. You know, and uh, it's uh and it's they're they're you know they're it's a lot of hair gel, and they look amazing, dude. But uh, you know, uh, and, and that's that's the same Photoshop's thing. Photoshop's awesome, though. Oh, oh, Photoshop's oh, awesome. Though. But and, you know, but here the, that's just what what Nick is talking about. That's the same thing with fucking beards, man. <laughs> okay, so like I called up the operator beard because you know all the dudes we want to roll around like <laughs> like bro, like bro, you ain't about to roll in and break in and take out Osama bin Laden, bro. Like like you're not you're not like you're not Delta. Oh, but they, you know. oh, they're just straight. It's, it, they're either that or very metro. Okay, so like, um, I got yeah, like a, like a real hipster type beard. Yeah, so yeah. so I I got approached by a guy uh, who was in my area, and he wanted me to join his club called the Bearded Villains, and it looked cool. Oh my gosh, why does that sound familiar? They're pretty huge. So they end up putting me in the Bearded Villains and making me a. Uh, and I only did this because I'm like, let me be more social. I get asked beard questions sometimes. I said, let me be social. Right. Let me try. I'm gonna get out. Put me, my, I'm gonna put myself out there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Let me. Let me. <laughs> let me. Let me. The trust tree. You know. Let me fall backwards. And and it was a mistake. So so, I I I, I enter the trust tree and stuff, and you know they make me a prospect. And I'm like, man, I ain't got to do no hazing or nothing, or wear no goofy jacket or nothing, right? Be nobody biker bitch or anything, right? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking, but then I, but they don't ride bikes. They ride beach cruisers. They wear sandals. I'm like, uh. <laughs> they, were, they were like, hey, brother. But they call everybody, so, they call everybody brother, like Hulk Hogan. But they're like, hey, brother, you want to have a chapter meet? So. So they're almost like the like the PB villains of like San Diego exactly. or something. Some <laughs> Ex exactly, exactly, man. I was like, damn. I'm like, what do I need to bring, bro? Some beer? Or what? They're like, no, just bring your energy and some candles and a prayer mat because we're gonna pray to the beard gods. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna stay home. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and, and I'm just like, damn. This is. I I was I was almost. I was surrounded by a group of people like that. I was, I, I was, that I almost put my life in danger. You know, it's, <laughs> I but after you start drinking some Kool Aid and yeah, and like, nothing, you know, everyone taking a nap. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, <sighs> you know, I'm like, man, I I fucking have oil in between my fingernails and don't have any damn fingernails. I'm like, they're gonna be over here dissing me. They're gonna be in the corner. Look at this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I think it's like a safe to say I mean people who are about it are about it and it's funny because you get into these situations you know where it's like you walk into a bar and you're like well where's the gym at where does the gym come into play here because it's like you know you got the outfit man you got the thing going on and you guys are all networked together but at, at what point do you you know like are we going to work out at any point or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, like, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I did that, that cracks me up, man. The, the, the operator beards, like you're saying, and, right. and it, it's, it's, I try to be a person, man. Like I, you shouldn't be able to, you know, 
you, you shouldn't be able to look at me and then talk to me and get everything that you did. And, and I fulfill every fantasy that you thought I would be. You know, I, sh I shouldn't be, okay, this guy looks like a criminal. And you talk to me, and I'm like, yeah, I just got out the pen. You know, or this guy looks like whatever. And, and people, I think people thrive off of that, though. It just seems like people, they want you to know, yeah, I'm fucking operator beard right now. I fucking, I'm Call of Duty. I'm ranked 99 on Call of Duty. What's up? <laughs> You know what? Well, you know, I mean, every every guy, I mean, every guy in the gym has a thing going, you know, if you look around. And for me, see, I like the psychology uh, behind the gym because, you know, everyone's like you, like Nick says, everybody comes in there and they project their uh, their image. You know, men and we're, we're yeah, peacocks, too. Men like to come in, you oh, know, you got yeah. the like you guys got the. You got the guys kind of like the, the hip hop, like America's best dance crew. Like they got their like, <laughs> you know, they're coming in with the drays and the fresh lids. And then, you know, you got the other, and then you got the pretty boys coming in. Every guy comes and brings his little flavor, you know. Mm -hmm. it, you, it, here's, with, here's, 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 here. I, I gotta, I gotta address my black people real quick. All right. Okay. Because. You guys are confusing me. If you're listening out there, either wear shorts or wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> These fucking and one shorts that go down to your ankle, your cankles. I mean, it's, it's just it's just throws me off. It just throws me off. I like man, I, I go I, yeah, and then it, and a long ass t shirt. I'm just like, God damn! Why don't you just wear a fucking robe and come work out? Like, and I, I see this with my black people. I'm just like, oh man, that shit right there has fucking Dollar Mart written all over it right there. I'm like, damn, you, neutral gang colors, okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's the strike. <laughs> neutral gang colors, you got the long fucking shorts. I'm just like, huh, tall bro. Uh, yeah, fucking in the tall ass tee that's choking the neck. I'm just like, we gotta do better. Go get you yeah. some muscle awesome militia gear. Or should I, I, mean, or should yeah, I capitalize on that? Should I capitalize on that? Make <laughs> yep, fucking... There you go. Start making, start making muscle bunch of tall, tall tees. Yeah, fucking, what are, what are they called? Pro fives or whatever? You gotta, yeah. you gotta run like fucking eight coats to make the ink stick? Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> I think we all have, you know, you know, between all the, all the, you know, white folks, we all, everybody has their like, hilarious little like corny things we do oh, yeah but at least you guys have variety oh, yeah. at least you guys have variety <laughs> <laughs> that's the th oh yeah everybody oh, what are you up. talking about man everybody's white folks are up. just as clowns oh, oh, but you but look but you have entertain you have for the whole you have a whole variety of them though you have the bro yeah you, you you have the guy that comes in there he wears the under armor stuff but it's all got the grass camo on it not camo the grass camo then you got the operator guy yeah. who wears the military camo then you got the guy Who's the teenager? He has just the worst acne, and you can tell he's in there. Uh, he just got got done with zero period, and he's in there trying to get bigger before he goes to strongman class later. Uh, you have uh, you have the, the you have the racquetball dad. You know he goes in there and plays racquetball. You, you guys have you guys have variety. You know you guys have variety. You know it's yeah. it's, it's pretty much. It's it's pretty much you know what you see what you get with a lot of other guys like Indian guys. It's, we and we have a lot of we have a huge Sikh population here uh, in Bakersfield. I think the largest in the country actually. So when you go in there, you see the same thing. And uh, right. and and you know my my good friend Young Harry. He he was actually supposed to be here tonight, but he's not here. But uh, he's he's Sikh, and we talk about that all the time. It's like. For us, when we go somewhere together, and I see my people, I'm like, "Oh shit, here we go." And then for him, it's the same thing. He's like, he, he, "I'm like, why? Why you got your hands over your nose?" He's like, "Here we go." <laughs> but at least with other people, you guys, you guys have variety, man, and that's you know, at, at, at least at least you have more to laugh at. Right, you, true. We do have we do have quite a bit. You, I, I'll I'll give you on that. We. Within the very confused individuals as far as what they're oh, yeah. trying to put out there as you, far as who they are. You guys get those old guys, that middle aged old guys that look like house and they wear the, the, the Jesus sandals and the cargo shorts and they get in there and they just do like slow motion stuff. You know, you guys got the variety. Yeah, the guy that shows up. Yeah, we got yeah, talking about that, you know, I just the other day I had 
I had this 19 year old kid, and there was his girlfriend. Girlfriend had on leggings and a tank top, you know, and he had on matching with bright ass fluorescent yellow bodybuilder, you know, t- uh, laser back tank top. And, oh God, um, that brings a tear to my eye. Mm. And, and with a matching with a matching neon shorts, and then you know, you know, she was on. like dressing yeah. him up before that, like getting him all like yep. crimped up and ready to go. Yep. Like someone needs and to rescue him, bro. Over. Yep, very next machine over was this like forty, fifty year old dude that had on like a Welcome to Montana with an elk on it, <laughs> with like yeah. camo <laughs> cargo pants on, and he had his combat boots on and sweet handlebar mustache. And then we had the eighty year old dude with the like I was talking about with the windbreaker. Seriously, it, it's seriously, you want to go get some entertainment? Go to a <laughs> rec center and work out. All right, don't go to any clubs. Go to a rec center. Oh, yeah, that's got to be That's, gotta that's be where you're going to get. I, I, I definitely it. admire Nick for working out at the, you know, me and, me and Nick over here talking about all our little, like, first world clubs. And, you know, Nick's over there, like, getting it done at the Y. And it's like, I respect Pretty that, much, man. man. <laughs> well, if I need to step out, if I need to step out and, and actually get, you know, some, some atmosphere about it, I, I, I am pretty fortunate. About 30, 20 minutes away, I have one of the, I uh, still heat gym, so you know that's always kind of nice to to duck into there once in a while. You know, about once every month, month and a half, I'll try to go get a session in at Phil Heath's gym, and shit, you'll see Ben Paluski, you'll see Phil Heath, you'll see Jay Cutler, you'll see um, shit, you name it. Everybody, like, they, they, they do a lot of shoots. Everybody, too. they do. Yeah, what a what a great opportunity to get to expose it is. It's all awesome, those guys. Man. Oh, and it's so cool because they're all like super chill. Like, you know, I, I was, last time I saw Phil Heath in there, he was prepping for Olympia last year and he's in there pedaling away on a bike and two bikes down was a 60 year old lady, you know, pedaling away on a bike. And I'm just like, that lady has no idea who the hell that large yeah. man is right there. But, you know, she's still, she's still putting it in right now and it's Phil Heath's gym. <laughs> until she surprises uh, you, not, until she good. until she surprises you and she flags him down, and he's like, "Yes, ma'am." She's like, "Kyrie is gonna kick your ass at the Olympia." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. No, but, no, but that's that's the cool thing about that. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah, it, it's 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 definitely cool. Like going to gold, and, and that's funny too. It's the same thing. I was gonna ask you, like, how come you don't go there more often? But I don't go to Gold's Gym Venice that often, so I understand. Oh, boy, I just, I'm too cheap, man. I can tell you, I, <laughs> exactly. I hate that's paying a, for gym memberships. I, 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 you know, plus, I'm work out with cheap. I think anybody who's, you know, serious about what they're doing, like Nick, you know, I don't, I haven't met you in person, but, you know, just talking with you, you know, we're all, you're obviously passionate about what you're doing, and somebody's going to do that. You know, we're guys, like, you know, normal guys are going to go to the big places like that, you know. You'll find them at Wise, at little gyms or hole in the walls all over, you know, the U.S. So I think, well, you know, the biggest reason, you know, the biggest reason I love going to the rec center is because the squat racks are always empty. Yeah, you, you get, <laughs> right? you, yeah, you can get it done. I mean, you, you can get in, you can Nobody get out. Nobody touches the squat rack there, so I, you know, I, I, I can get in there and I got a squat rack, and it's all to me. <laughs> so and, and you know, you know, that's the big reason I go there. Like I, I, I went to the gym. Uh, I don't know. I posted up on the internet. I went. I went like maybe two weeks ago, maybe a little over two weeks ago. Could have been three weeks ago. And the lady scanned my key card and was like, "You haven't been here in over six months." And I'm like, and all I could think about is all the damn money I'm wasting. <laughs> I'm just like, God damn. And I don't know. It's it's. I don't have everything at my gym. It's nice to. I have bad knees, so it's nice to use the leg extensions and Man. stuff like that. But, but a change of scenery is nice every once in a while, you know. It's, until you I change like, the scenery, yeah. <laughs> then you're like, yeah. it's okay, right. okay, I had to get gangster with this fucking bitch up in there. So, yeah. I'm in there, and here's my thing now, because I, I have muscle militia now, and it's, it's, it's going, it's running, it's up. You can Google me right, right on the spot. So, I try to keep a good image, and I try to, I try to, Make sure I don't make anybody because everybody's a potential customer. So I I, I want to make sure that you get the me that I am. Like I want to make sure that I'm approachable and so I try to do extra stuff. Like I try to make people feel comfortable. I I back away from the squat rack. Uh, 
after I do a set in case somebody wants to work in, even though I really don't want anybody to, um, I, I, you know, in between sets when I'm just resting, I'm not looking aggressive or flexing. I'm just kind of bobbing my head like, okay, and smiling like, okay, you can approach me if you need to just trying to be real nice. So there's this girl and she's on the, um, the cable where you do cable flies. And, uh, is this, is this at the same location we're talking about? At, this is at coffee, right? So you know what okay. I'm talking about. Okay. So she, she's over there. She's on the left side doing some um, tricep work on the push down. And so the, right. the other one's available. So me, she's been there for a while. So I'm watching her and I'm like, okay, let me make my move. Wait, uh, let, let me make sure she's not using the other side. So I wait about 15 minutes and just keep doing other stuff. She doesn't touch the other side. As soon as I go up over there. And she doesn't say anything to me. I hook everything up, get ready to knock out my first set, and she's like, oh, "I'm using this." So I, oh, I, I tell her I apologize maybe three thousand times. I'm so sorry, sorry. You know, usually I pay attention. Uh, here, here, let me get out your way. So then she does like one set of flies, right? So this other guy's looking at her like. This old guy, he's like, what the hell? Like, he he knew she wasn't using it. So he he, he looked at her like, bitch. <laughs> and he told me, he was like, here, you can use mine. And I was like, oh, okay, thank you. So I start using it, right? She And I'm watching her the whole time. I'm doing my stuff. And I'm like, she's not even using it. So then this other guy comes up that she knows. And I know him, too. I don't know him that well, but we talk. And um, he walks up over there. And uh, she's like, you can use this if you want. And he's like, oh, no, no, I'm going to do this over here. So I'm like, this asshole's not even using it. So I get ready to go back over there because I need it. Because, you know, uh, Nick, you know how the thing is over there. The one the one cable side is by the wall. So you can't really. I mean, you know, any it, it's safe to say, you know, any gym, that cable machine is always going to be the, the popular, you know, destination. But but here's, here's my thing. It, it, it was more than that, though, because it's like. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's, like, it's, I mean, she was she, she obviously. She was like being like a, a dick, like for some reason. So. So, yeah, so, obviously she was not in there to get work done, you know. Yeah, so I, so nah. she, she wasn't using it. She offers to let the other guy use it in between her thousand hours of rest. And when she's taking breaks, she's not even hopping on it. She's just not using it. So, like I said, I, I needed to extend my arm farther, so I go to get on it again. <laughs> so I just get on it because she's not using it. I set it up again. She doesn't say anything. She watched me set it up. I pick it up, put it, raise it up, everything, put the different bar on there. She walks up again. Uh, I thought I told you I was using it. Back the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I snapped. <laughs> I snapped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude! I'm honestly I'm happy that that it went that way because, like, you, in, my, in my mind, you're above and beyond. Like, you're a saint because you know you yeah. come in and you know you got and I I don't like to label you know, but you do got that basic bitch in there, and it's like, look, man, if it's like if you you know it's they want that attention and that validation. It's like, and you're just trying to get your work done, and you're just trying to be polite. But I think what really sets you off is when they just take that politeness, they take that courtesy, and they just step all over it, you know, like, yeah. and it's like, look, I'm not being polite to you because, guy. yeah, like, it's like, I'm not being polite to you because of anything you have or anything that you have that I want. I'm being polite to you as a, as like, you know, I mentioned before, it's that common courtesy, but yeah. then. That's the hard part about yeah, nowadays. Nice you don't get, yeah. There's no reciprocation. Yeah, I mean, and, I went, so, and I then you got to go to that point. You got to go to that point where Nick went. You know, like I, I, I haven't got crazy with anybody like that, and I, I don't think I. I <laughs> <laughs> I, she ran up out of I there. I wish I could have seen her face. I, I, I told her straight up. I, I, I just snapped, dude. I, I, I didn't even. I didn't have my music loud too. I didn't even turn my music. I just said, I was just like a dog, a hungry dog. You put your hand in the bowl. <laughs> I just like back to front. That bad, <laughs> but I mean, she was out of line, bro. I mean, she overstepped it. I mean, because you know, like you said, I, I think you have that line where you get pushed to and pushed to it. If, and like any of us, we've spent enough the years of our lives in a gym, you know, you know, you know, granted, there's been guys who's invested way more, but we, we spent at least, you know, six to 10 years in a gym. And you get to that point where it's like, you, you were on a, like, you know, like Nick was saying, he, he's in there like an hour and that's your time. And, you know, yep. we have to get in there and get it done. And it's one of those things where it's like, I'm going to give you the first chance. 
I'm going to give you a try, but it's like, if you push me, it's like, you know, I'm going to do what I got to do. Yeah, and, and, and you know, yeah. I, I, I hate, I hate, I hate being like that. Of and, course, and, yeah. And, 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 oh, yeah. The, but the worst, the worst part about it is, guys, the, the worst part about it is, after it was over, and I kept playing it over in my mind, like, could I have handled that differently? Everything, everything about nope. it told it. Yep. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. That was about as good as it could be handled nope. right there. <laughs> oh, could have gave you the rock bottom and the corporate elbow. That's about it. <laughs> that was about it. That's true. Yeah, but uh, 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 Nick Troop, do you uh, do you uh, do you have to do with anybody at the rec center? Like, have you have you ever had to snap on anybody? You know, honestly, I haven't. I've, I've, I've wanted to. I've really wanted to several times over uh, on, on random people, and just because the gym etiquette was just piss poor, you know. Uh, but I don't know. I just it, it's not in me to be a snap to people if I can help it. Um, you know, I've I've given a few people a look. You know, to yeah, yeah now yeah. Get, get your ass away. This is my area. Don't even, you know, like just get your ass away from where I'm at. <laughs> the, but the, the hangover, don't even. Sorry. <laughs> nope. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah everybody, yeah, everybody, everybody like has that vibe they're putting out. You know, yeah, it's like you can tell when the guy's like getting work done. And like you said, you know, Nick, another man will give you that, like, oh, he's in here and he's getting work done. So, you know, I'm going to give him that space because, you know, I respect that. Yeah, yep. and, and, and and Nick 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 Troop, you know, I you know I I you read the text messages, man. He feels the passion. I get I get passionate, man. I try to I try to stay stay <laughs> rational, but uh, Nick's like my my guidance counselor half the time. I'm over here <laughs> texting, him and I, walking his ass off the ledge. Yeah, deep and, breath into your nose. Love your earlobes, blue star, get all Martin Lawrence and, on that shit. It, it, it's funny, like I, I I'll go on like a crazy rant tirade to Nick. And then Nick always just comes with the simple benefit of the doubt thing, like, well, maybe he's just tired. <laughs> right, it's like wipes out, wipes out, you but, justifying your whole yeah, rage, like, yeah, you know. It, 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 calms, it calms me down because I have to stop and think about it and go, no, he's fucking lazy. <laughs> he's not, he's you're, you're angry at him for taking away your rage. Like, why Why am I so calm right now? I want my anger. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh, you know, we're not yeah. going. We're not going to go into details, but Nick, no, Nick, Nick saw some of the pictures yesterday. No, I know exactly what <laughs> I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Three thumbs up, bud. Three thumbs up. Yeah, man. But you know, I, you know on, on that note, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Hey, you know what? Let, let, let's. Uh, we're, we're, we're running out of time here anyway. Let's just. Let's real quick. Let's talk about um, people wanting to be in the industry, and let's kind of give some advice. Um, all, I think we can all say something because uh, Nick Hopper, you're you're a spectator and a fan of it, and you hate social media, and you keep it you you keep tabs on bodybuilding. So you you're you're an outside perspective on this. Me, I uh, deal with I have people constantly applying for sponsorships, and I have people I sponsor and blah 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 blah. Nick Troop, you're a sponsor. You do all the same stuff, so you know that, and you hear me complain half the time. So I want to touch on this. People out there that want to get into the fitness business and as an athlete or as um, an ambassador for a brand, a product, I've said this a million times and I want to say this right now on the mic. Anybody out there listening that wants to represent a company, it's about money. It's It's about money. Now, there's levels to that. There's greed. There's all, there's overhead. There's tons of things that. But it's at the end of the day, it's about money. So when somebody sponsors you, and they give you a product, and you're supposed to promote that product, it's so that you can make them money. Now everybody has their own degrees of it. Some people want you to make triple the money of whatever items they give you. They want you to make triple. Some people just want you to make their money back, but that's your job. You can't ask somebody for a sponsorship when you can't deliver. 
It just yeah. kills me how people these days are so lazy and they expect handouts. And they ex they have these expectations. And in, in my situation, you know, I, I'm not going to send somebody boxes and boxes of shirts each month so that you can only sell a shirt or two. That's just ridiculous. Now, if you have yep. no, if you if you understand that, and I have guys that understand that, they might not get everything that I release because they're like, okay, he's got to make his money back first, and I haven't, and I'm not contributing to that, so I'll just have to get that stuff later. I respect that, but you have other people who expect everything up front, and if they don't get it, you know, they stop performing. They ain't gonna put in the work. No, and. You know, talking about that, you know, I there, I was watching a video the other day. I, I tend to watch videos on YouTube when I'm doing cardio. And Steve Cook, you know, we talked about him earlier, and, and he talked he, he talked about this very thing and about how, you know, how he got started up with uh, Optimum. You know, he actually won a couple of little shows, things like that. Got involved with the industry that way. Had two companies approach him. He went with Optimum, obviously, and he's doing very well for himself, traveling the world, going to Australia, going all over hell. But his biggest thing was is he wasn't afraid to work. He told Optimum he wanted to go to as many, you know, Europas, Arnold's. He wanted to get sent everywhere he could to work the booth. And he was the guy ripping apart boxes, restocking products, not just the one sitting there, you know, trying to make a name for himself with like fans at the time when he first got started, he was doing the little things to get recognized by the company to get to, uh, to get brought along for the long haul. And you know, he says you have to be the hardest worker. You know, he he sacrificed a bunch of stuff. He was talking about how he worked a job as a waiter just so that way he could have a flexible schedule to go work the shows for optimal. Yeah. And that's what it all boiled down to is not be afraid to do work to get what is you know what what you hope to aspire for you know you know i you know i you know doing what i do with isotory you know i you know i i am a ambassador for uh isotory you know supplement company and i do all this stuff for my bodybuilding.com i run the forums for them you know so when you know they've got new products coming out you know i'm, I'm the one that's getting products in people's hands and getting them to do still reviews and telling us, giving us feedback on the product. And, you know, I get compensated in product and, you know, now I, you know, put in some time with them and I, I have an opportunity to maybe do some more stuff here for Isatory in the next two weeks here with a photo shoot for them. And, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's taken in November, 2012 is when I first got introduced to Isatory and, you know, here we are now and, I'm starting to get some other opportunities to to do some things here with Isotory. Because of, so because of you patience, know, it, it takes time and patience. Exactly, you know, and consistency. Exactly, and yep. You know, and you know, and, and I'm not gonna lie. You know, I've asked for other things from them along the way, and they've told me no. And it's like, well, okay, I don't like it. You know, what am I gonna do? And it's like, right. you know what? I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep chipping away. I'm gonna keep chipping away and show them that I I can do more. You know, and. You know, so, you know, I work small bodybuilding shows for them. I, you know, I just got done working um, a local show here this last weekend. You know, real small show. Um, but, you know, that's just it. Worked the vendor booth there for a little bit. And, I, you know, I used to work a few more of the local shows. And, you know, you got to do the little things to hopefully, you know, prove your worth to the, to the company. And then, you know, eventually they'll start to allow you to do some other things and bring you into some other things and you know so definitely feel like I'm I'm fortunate for that opportunity that I finally have with Isotory coming forward here um, and, and that's just that the biggest thing I, I can say is just you know not be afraid to take your time with it put in work and, and do the little things you know it's not that tough to post a picture on Instagram, you know, really, you know, wearing, wearing something or showing a product or doing something like that. It's just the little things right now, especially with a company like Muscle Militia being, you know, just, just, you know, really starting to get out there and trying to, to push it out there. or not just in the local California scene, but trying to get it to go, you know, nationally now. And it's just the little things of, you know, with the shirts that I have, I, I probably wear, I'm probably wearing at least three muscle militia, militia shirts a week, you know, just every day, you know, like my gym class knows about muscle militia, 
say, <laughs> they know all about it. You know, and like people around, they just they always see me wearing a muscle muscle shirt all the time. And that's just this. The little thing that you can do to get the name out there right now and then the social media aspect of it. So, yeah, yeah. Again, I, I, I mean, the, put in work. Yeah, we, 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 what he's saying is you guys, got, you guys have to, it's at the end of the day, it's a business. You guys have to think economically. You have to think. And people don't do this because we're, we're we're so used to with fast food, with Walmart, with everything ready for you. Our, as a society, we don't appreciate the value of items and what it takes takes to create those items or to even have those items there in front of you to purchase. So, you know, it, it's it's crazy that. You know, to expect me to give you boxes of stuff when when you know it costs money to make the stuff, it may it costs money to send it to you. It costs time to 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 stitch on the tags. It takes time to do that. Like it's 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 crazy where I'll be I'll, I'll be out there printing shirts for ten to twelve hours. Had other plans. I'm out there 10 to 12 hours. And once I get going, I can't stop. This is with no breaks. Maybe a 30-minute break. Printing shirts back to back. And after I print the shirts, it's like, okay. Now I got to stitch tags on these 50 shirts. <laughs> you know, right. you yeah. know, uh, the, you, know, you got to prove your value to the company. Yeah. This, At the end of the day, if you want to get something, you got to prove your value. You, know, you got to show your worth. Yeah, you know, but you, you, you have to pe – people – you guys have to realize, big or small company, regardless of the fact, what you're being given takes time and effort to produce. Now, the yep. problem is big companies order in bulk, and it's usually from China, and on top of that, they use, they use tax write-offs like crazy because they're huge companies. So all the shit they're giving you is just stuff that's old and already written off. It's paid for. It's They don't need it anymore. It's going to cost them more money to store it. That's why these companies do tons of giveaways and this, that, and the third. And um, that's why people like me don't do tons of giveaways because it's like I'm just pissing away money. <laughs> right. So it's... And, 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 and you can't... You can't run... You can't expect, you know, a smaller brand to run the way a big brand is going to run. And you also have to realize at some point in time, okay, maybe this is a special opportunity. Like half, you know, half the people don't realize that they get with a small company and they have to realize that technically they shouldn't have a sponsorship at all. The only reason why they have a sponsorship is because there is, there's a smaller company. But then you're lucky and you come across a guy like me with a small company who wants to build the company around your personality, your look, and your attitude. But when you don't deliver, you know, I can't do anything about it. Right. You know, I, I think you know, what, what like both of you, what both you next are talking about is, you know, when you, the main topic you said is someone wanted to get into the industry and the biggest difference, and this is coming from, you know, like I said before, I'm not uh, famous or sponsored or anything like that. I'm just a regular guy. But what I noticed, the, the biggest difference between successful people and everybody else is perspective. Successful people have an appropriate perspective. And when it comes to bodybuilding, you know, Nick talked about, uh, you know, his, his relationship with Isatori and, like, he he understands the consistency it takes. Building a wall takes one brick at a time, and you know, putting in that day to day effort and that time. And yes. Nick, you know, Nick Nick Clemens with his business. I've watched. The, I've taken great pleasure watching him over the last three years grow his product. And and I mean, like he said, his own sweat, his own passions in that because we do this because our hearts are in it, but all three of us, and I know that. And I, I think that's what it comes down to is, and so many people, uh, people want to hatch. They want to become, you know, that end result, and they don't, they don't understand the journey or the process or any of it. 
and that's where you know guys like us. I think we we get offended the most because, like Nick said, it takes the time invested. People's time is what's most valuable, and you know, like what it takes to put together a quality product or put together and that's anything. Whether you're training for a show or, and I think it just comes down to to do you understand what it takes? Because like any of the like we were talking about all those. The, the great examples of pros, uh, Steve Cook. And if you even watch, you know, I, I get all my training tips from watching the pros, and they'll tell you the percentage of guys that can make money off endorsements and off. It's a, it is, you know, a small, small percentage. Yep. yep. I mean, it, it, it's like you said, you know, it's, it's, it's one, it's finding someone who's willing to put in the work, you know, to, would you train by yourself if no one would ever see you? Would you bodybuild if, you know, you know the shadow warrior concept? You know, when it all comes down to it, why are you doing what you do? Exactly. Yep. Exactly. That's the nail on the head. You know, like you're saying, like, you know, I'm, 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 sitting, I'm sitting over here drinking out of a water bottle right now. And I have a different appreciation for for it just because I know how it's made you know and it, it was right. what's crazy to me is that we have all this technology now in the palms of our hands and nobody takes advantage of it and uh, before we go guys I want to tell this quick story real quick um, so my um, I think we were talking about this the other day uh, uh, Nick Hopper um, my uh, grandfather used to box and his brother and both of his brothers, they all boxed. So yeah. you know, I grew up I grew up a little bit doing a little boxing stuff here and there. Never really got into it as far as actually going the distance of fighting, but definitely trained and, and stuff like that. I still do. Um what what's what's crazy is I was um uh, talking to my great uncle and uh, about boxing stuff, just reminiscing and stuff, and um it made me start really researching some of the old school guys and old school stuff. And I posted up the other day because I found I had I just found this out. I didn't know that um, Floyd Mayweather's coach, who's his uncle, Roger Mayweather, um, he was a pro fighter and a world champion boxer. And his nickname was the Black Mamba. Well, who else's nickname is the Black Mamba? Kobe Bryant, right? Right. Yeah. So. I put on Facebook, I said, who is the, I said, uh, basically trivia, who is the original Black Mamba in pro sports? And guess what? It ain't Kobe Bryant. I put in capital letters, so don't say Kobe Bryant because it's not Kobe Bryant. Either you don't know or go find out, right? So this is on the internet, right? So basically when you're asking a question on the internet, you know, you're, I'm expecting a bunch of people to go Google it and then put the answer down in the comments and pretend like they knew what I was talking about even though I know they don't. Instead, I get people on there, the first comment I get is, oh, it sounds like you're trying to hate on Kobe. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, people are missing chromosomes. People are, right. really, we, we are really dealing with some short bus people on this, on this internet. Like, what, what, what part of that conversation did you draw that from? I don't, I don't understand. Either you answer the question, you say, I don't know who, take a wild guess, do something. It's just, a, a, and you can Google it. That's the worst part about it. It's just, it just seems like people don't take advantage of what's in front of them, is my whole point. It's just ridiculous to me that you can't just Google it and say, and I'd rather you Google it and pretend like you knew what I was talking about uh, than to take it on, take my, take, take specific words from my uh, post and create a new thread. That's just ridiculous, right? And and that just shows yeah. you, that just shows you the, the 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 tone of the internet and social media and just the intelligence level of individuals uh, in general. It, it's retarded. I, I'm I'm giving you facts, and the only way you can challenge my facts is with other facts, right? Right. So, but I mean, I think that's the difference between someone who like let's talk like let's talk to supplements. You know, there's, I think there's two types of lifters out there. There's a guy that, you know, he'll get a supplement. So let's say whatever it is I get, like a pre-workout, a post, whatever. And, you know, whenever you get a new product, you're always looking at the ingredients, right? You know, 
So, you know, both of you know that, you know, dealing with supplements, you're like, hey, I want to see what's in this. Now, you know, we can agree that most probably 65, 70% of guys are going to just take it because of like either how the label is or what the, the reviews they saw. But then there's people that, you know, like Nick and then, you know, all of us, I guess I would say is like, you, you're going to go and you're going to research. You're going to look up that word. You're going to find out what it means. Cause you know, a lot of these words are science words, man. Mm. They're way beyond my, yes. my IQ, you know, so I have to go, but we'll take, that's what Nick's talking about is taking that step and, Go find we you go find out for yourself, you know. And, Educate and, yourself. And, and exactly, you're you're hitting the nail on the head. And 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 what's what the sad part about it is, it's in the palm of your hand. As you're reading the yeah. back of the supplement bottle, you could be googling the <laughs> word. You know, I you know, I, I a cousin of mine. This was some years back. A cousin of mine was doing homework, right? And turns around is is sitting in front of a computer. Google is on the screen. It's literally on the screen. Google search and 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 the marker is flashing in the search box. And she turns around and asks me how to spell something. Right. <laughs> and these people can vote. So. But you know, also too, we came from you know we I think we're part of that last group of you know people that we came from where there was a time all three of us were alive where there was like, you know, there was pagers. So there was none of that, you yeah, know. This is a young person. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really, it, I can't make him look any better. Yeah. After like, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the scary part. Okay. You're, you're back again, Nick. Yeah, I'm back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I don't want to take up any much, any much more of you guys' time, so I'm going to shut the hell up. But uh, if any of you guys want to wrap up on some topics or anything, because, uh, you know, I, I, I'll i go for another hour or so. <laughs> I just, uh, mm -hmm. I really I really appreciate the opportunity from Nick. And then and then meeting, uh, meeting you, Nick, and getting to, like, learn about what you do is, you know, I've already, you know, just the fact that you, you associate with Nick Clemens, I, I you know I have a, a healthy amount of respect for you, and I'm just it was a pleasure to talk to you, man. And I wish you the best of luck with your uh, with your photo shoot with all the things that I mean, like you said, I think you you know what the formula for success is. So I, I really look forward to you know seeing seeing how well you do, man. Appreciate it, man. Good to have you on the show. Definitely appreciate you uh, taking some time and, and you know just joining us and on and on. Getting to know you as well, dude. Um, Thank you. Have a uh, you know. No, I, been I appreciate that. For a while is, is you know yeah, yeah, good yeah, stuff yeah. there, man. So bring you back on sometime. Yeah, yeah, man. We we definitely want to have you back on, man. To talk talk some more. And uh, there's so many topics to get into. Oh man, we could go. I mean, we could we could go volume. Oh yeah, easily. So, no, you, you any time, man. You're definitely welcome, man. It's not like we have a special format or anything. We just like to talk, man. This is. <laughs> yep. yeah. No, it was it was a pleasure, man. I, like I'm honored that you guys, would, you know, because like Nick says, there's not a lot of people that you enjoy talking to on a daily basis, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, and people, real quick, people listening to this podcast, we're not we're not on here to crack jokes or have a theme. We're not trying to have a theme to keep people listening or get people excited to listen, man. We just like to talk. We want you guys to feel like you're conversating with us and hanging out and uh, just just taking in our perspective. And you guys are more than will, uh, welcome to message us and tell us we suck or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> do, do what you want to do what you want to do but when it comes to social media i'm uh the patrick ewing of that i'm i'm, I'm a great blocker so uh <laughs> it's what i do is what i do yeah like if you guys listen to our epi last episode tough talk i can handle i can handle myself on social media but anyway you know like i said nick hopper anytime you want to come uh, hang out with us is is greatly appreciated uh Nick Troop. Uh we got we got some more episodes to knock out as well. Yes, sir. And and, and uh I definitely wanna uh on our uh cover the um the uh, what's his name? Uh, Jeff Long supplement. Yeah. I definitely want to talk to you about that because uh I have some new information about it that's actually pretty good. 
Nice. So we'll talk about that. But um, All right. everybody will link up on social media. I'll connect you guys so, you know, we can build up uh, this love circle pause. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, yeah, the, the, Knicks, the uniting of the Knicks can only happen, you know, right. maybe once on every full moon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> the Knicks triangle. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you guys stay on the line. All you guys, uh, thank you for listening to our podcast. We'll be back with some more episodes real soon. Make sure you guys follow us on social media. Follow at Muscle Militia. On Instagram, follow us on Twitter at Muscle Militia and the number one. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Muscle Militia number one. Just show support, man. Buy yourself something nice. Uh, I try to keep track of everybody that purchases and make sure you sign up on the mailing list. I'll send you guys information on new releases and blah, 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 blah. I do it all myself, man. I appreciate the time and support that people do give for this podcast and for everything. And on that note, I'm going to say sayonara. I'm Michael De La Pava from Miami, Florida, owner of the Battle Axe Gym. I'm a nationally qualified strongman, and I powerlift as well. In strongman, I happen to like the movements that I'm not good at. Um, I'm not the best presser, I'll be honest. I'm just, you know, I don't like pressing as much. It's difficult for me. So I do like the log press and the circus dumbbell, which are, I think, the log press is the definition of strength. You get something really heavy and you pick it up off the ground and you press it over your head. There is, to me, there is no other definition. Performance sports are about performance. I'm extremely fortunate to be sponsored by Top Secret. It was something that not only am I proud of, but it's one of those things where I call my mother. I'm like, Mom, I made it in Spanish. Ya lo hice. I use the Top Secret way. I use the Top Secret BCAAs. I use the creatine. I use the pump igniter because when you're lifting at 9 o'clock at night, a pre-workout can really make your workout. That's what I give my clients, that's what I give my family and my friends, and it's good stuff. There's just no, there's no buffer around it, that's just reality. Nitroflex, hyperemia and testosterone enhancing powder by GAT. To build strong, dense, grainy muscle, break it down first with insane training. Big Rami takes Nitroflex right before each training session to decimate the weights in the gym. Available in eight intense flavors, Nitroflex by GAT is one of the most powerful pre-workout concentrates on the market. Clinically studied Nitroflex gives you that phenomenal pump, seething intensity, and laser-sharp focus. Nitroflex by GAT. Get it now.